One of the biggest limitations of ChatGPT is that it's only trained on information up to 2021. So that means that you cannot get live data or cannot browse the internet to give you more up-to-date information. So for instance, if I asked ChatGPT to write me a paragraph about the specs of the iPhone 14, it will not be able to give me that information because it's only been trained up to 2021. So this can be very discouraging and sometimes frustrating if you're trying to write articles or you're trying to get information and more up-to-date topics. Well, that's where Professor Perplexity AI comes in. Perplexity AI is an AI chat box that allows you to browse the internet and be able to access live up-to-date information. It's powered by ChatGPT, but it's able to bridge the gap that ChatGPT currently has, which is not being able to um, give you information past 2021. So for instance, if I were to ask Perplexity AI the same question, which is write me a blog post about the iPhone 14 specs, it would be able to give me an answer. So when we run the same input on ChatGPT versus Perplexity AI, we're able to get a lot more up-to-date and a lot more um, specific information on newer topics when using Perplexity. In this example, we see here that we're actually able to get some of the iPhone 14 specs. We're able to see the size of the iPhone, how much it weighs. We're able to get some specs on the camera, the chips that it's using, the battery life, and so on. And we're also able to just get more information um, that we currently cannot get on ChatGPT. So Perplexity AI is great for filling that gap that ChatGPT currently has. And while Perplexity AI is powered by ChatGPT, we have some unique features included in Perplexity that's not included in ChatGPT. So right off the bat, we see here below each of the um, outputs, we have the citations or the references to where Perplexity was able to gather that information. So if you wanted to actually go ahead and check some of the sources, you can click on um, those sources at the bottom of your outputs and that will take you over to the original content so you can actually go ahead and vet that for yourself. And they've also highlighted specific terms that may be useful for you to further investigate for that specific output. So in this example, we see that the iPhone 14 Max, the A15 Bionic chip, night mode, deep fusion, and so on are underlined. And if we actually click on that, we'll be able to get a definition of what that is. So if you need some clarification as to what that output is talking about, again, you can click on that um, right within the same um, chat box. So again, that allows you to deepen your understanding about whatever you're researching. And the last thing that I really like about Perplexity, if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll actually get some related questions. So these are kind of like the questions that would be at the bottom of Google for a specific search result. So again, if you want to gather some more information or if you're writing a blog post and you want to increase your topical authority, this can give you some ideas of things in which you can include within your article or things in which you can learn more about whatever topic you're researching. In this example, we're writing a blog post about the iPhone 14 specs. And some of the related questions are how to activate night mode on the iPhone 14, what are the improvements of night mode, and how to take better night mode photos of the iPhone 14. So it's giving us related topics to night mode because we clicked on that, but if we didn't click on that, then it would give us general related topics. For each of the outputs, if you click on view sources, you'll be able to, again to see the sources, but if you click on the view detailed mode, then you'll actually get more detailed output for that specific section. So if you want to generate further content or expand that section, you will click on that button. And if you want to view the concise mode, then again, it will concise that content. So that's just one of the many use cases that you have of perplexity. If you head over to the homepage, you'll be able to see some different things in which you can use and do with perplexity. So for example, you can ask it any question that you may ask Google, but you'll be able to get the answers to that question much quicker and you're able to investigate and do research much easier compared to Google. So for example, let's say I wanted to get more information about Google Bard. I can search that up on Perplexity AI and it'll be able to give me more information in a more concise way compared to if I were to search that up on Google. As you can see here, we get a nice um, explanation of what Google Bard is. And again, we get the sources. So if you want to um, go a little bit more in depth, we can click on those sources and read some more. Uh, but we can see some related questions here that we may have thought of or may not, but we can see that it makes it much easier for us to click on these questions. So for example, let's say we wanted to know the difference between Google Bard and ChatGPT. Again, we can click on that related question and we will be able to get an answer from Perplexity AI. Personally, I think that this is much better than just having to search this up on Google and then going ahead and reading through all of the outputs and trying to find the most relevant information. Um, I think this makes your research a lot quicker, a lot easier, and it uh, allows you to get 
or to get to the information that you're trying to find much quicker. And this is great, especially if you're writing blog posts or articles on newer topics. We know that if we tried to write an article about Google Bard using ChatGPT, it wouldn't be able to give us that information because again, it's only been trained up to 2021. But we definitely can use the information that we got from Perplexity AI to write a blog post. So, but we can definitely use the output uh, that we're getting from Perplexity AI to construct a blog post about Google Bard. So you can actually go ahead and just copy this over and paste this into your blog post, but you do have to uh, make sure that it's not plagiarized content because again, um, it does seem as though they're gathering the content from various sources uh, and putting it together in a unique way, but I wouldn't recommend just going ahead and popping this onto your blog post. You could probably use a rewriter or you can even use ChatGPT to rewrite the content for you and then post it on your blog post. And again, if we scroll down, we'll get to more related questions like what is the main difference between the data sources used by ChatGPT and Google Bard? And that's a great question that you may not have thought of on your own. But again, um, Perplexity is really, really smart at giving you some very useful related questions. So again, we get some main differences between the data sources used by ChatGPT and Google Bard. So this is very specific, but very, very um, important information if you are writing this blog post. Again, let's scroll down. How does the data source affect the accuracy of these chat boxes? So again, we can click on that, get some information. And remember, if you wanted to um, make this content a little bit more detailed, we can click view detailed and we'll get more content um, related to that section. So if you wanted to write a blog post, what I would do is copy that content, head over to chat GPT. I would recommend using the GPT-4 model because it's just better. Then I would paste that content in. So once you've pasted in the content that we got from um, perplexity, then you want to go ahead and give a input or a prompt, which would be your task is to take this information and write a blog post. Remember to rewrite the content so that it is unique and plagiarism free, write in an engaging style and always include tables and lists and always write in markdown. And as we can see here, um, ChatGPT will be able to take that information, rewrite it in your own words, and then um, be able to give you a very up-to-date article. So this would be a great method that you can use to combine perplexity AI with ChatGPT to help you write more live and up-to-date articles or blog posts. And as you can see here, we're getting some really, really good information. Um, we're getting a pretty long blog post, very in-depth, very well uh, formatted um, about Google Bard. And again, if we were to um, try this on ChatGPT to tell it to just write us a blog post on Google Bard, it definitely would not be able to do so, or it would be writing um, on some information that is outdated. Okay, so this is the full article in which we got back. We got um, a nice title here. We got a table of contents, which is about the data sources, impact of data sources, tips for ensuring accuracy and trustworthiness. So we talk about where the data sources come from, ChatGPT versus um, Google Bard, impact of data sources on the AI chat box, tips for ensuring accuracy and trustworthiness, and a conclusion. So now that we've gotten the full content, let's quickly go ahead and run this under a plagiarism checker. Okay, so I've run that content under a plagiarism checker, and as we can see here, the results are 100% unique content. So if you're worried about plagiarism, I would definitely go ahead and paste that into ChatGPT, ask it to rewrite the content, I will make it engaging, and you should have no problem with plagiarized content. So that is my review of Perplexity AI. I think it's a really, really good tool. It's a great solution and fills the gap of ChatGPT right now, which is its um, inability to write on newer topics. So if you guys wanna check out Perplexity for yourself, I highly recommend doing so. I'll leave a link in the description below this video. As always, I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, let it be known by giving us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, stay well.